If we capture a signal over time and draw a line over the peaks and valleys of that signal, we can find the loudest sound and the softest sound during that period. The difference between those two values is the dynamic range of a signal. So dynamic processors are devices that alter the audio signal depending on the amplitude level. There's discussions whether they're called dynamic because the level is constantly changing or because they're actually working on the dynamic range of the signal. There are multiple types of dynamic processors. The most common are compressors, limiters, expanders, and gates. From these four basic processors, we can create other processors like ANCs, levelers, AGC, dynamic equalizers, deacers, dockers, suppressors, exciters, and peak limiters. The structure of these processors is very simple. The input goes through a gain controller that continues to an output. The gain controller is like a volume control, but the signal is also diverted to a detector. This detector checks to see if the signal is valid to do any processing. Most of the time, we're just looking at volume. The gain computer is the one that decides what we're going to be doing with the level of the signal. This gain computer is the one that is going to be controlling the gain controller. Some more advanced dynamic processors will have a sidechain input separate from the normal input. This allows us to bring a different signal into the sidechain for detection. Dynamic processors have multiple parameters that can be adjusted. The most common ones are threshold, ratio, attack time, and release time. The threshold is a user-defined level that establishes when the processor will start working. The ratio defines how much we're going to change that signal regarding to the input. The attack time is how fast we're going to do that change, and the release time is how long it will take to go back to normal level. We can better explain how dynamic processors work by using a dynamic response graph. This graph represents the output level versus the input level. Input level is represented in the horizontal axis, while the output level is represented in the vertical axis. If we draw a diagonal line through this graph, we get a unity gain graph. Any input level will give us the exact same output level.